All right, it's official now. I think we're rolling. Um, Let me hit the the intro. Welcome to Vegas Around Town, episode one. We got my homie, Daniel Castro. He's the man of the town. Thank you for doing this, dude. He is basically a photographer, videographer. He's he has ties with the airsoft community. He ha- he's an entrepreneur. Owns his own company, mm-hmm. media company, Milson Media. He does this crazy bike ride called the AIDS Life Cycle, which is 545 miles from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Like, dude, you're just the man. You're the man of the town, dude. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks, man. I'm so, honored to be thank here. you. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Or thanks for having you. <laughs> thanks there you for go. having me. <laughs> First episode. Uh, we're both a little nervous too. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> this is our first time doing. It. We're just gonna talk. Just look at me in the eyes. So, dude. So, thank you for uh, have uh, coming over. Um, we're basically. I just want to talk to you about Las Vegas. Okay. Vegas to me, like everyone, kind of when I first moved here, people, you know, you get that super. Uh, that fake view of Vegas where it's like party city and maybe it was coin sin city at the time. But when I moved here like four or five years ago, it was definitely not that anymore. It was transitioning into this like art community. Like there's this huge, uh, just this downtown area that's all full of like gentrified buildings and converted into like art murals and Mm -hmm. like craft beer services or breweries. Um, and you're all part of that because like, <laughs> yeah, that's what definitely. you do. Um, so like bring us into like, maybe take us back to like why you even moved here. Like, all right. All right. Uh, so I've been here for less than four years. Um, a marketing job opportunity arose and I moved from Lake Charles, Louisiana, born and raised at 29 years. And I took a position with Enola J smoke grenades. They make colored smoke that's used in films, uh, movies, TV shows, all kinds of artistic, uh, photo shoots, you name it, uh, it's colored smoke that you have like eight different colors. So I moved all the way over here to work for them. Um, within a year and a half working for them, I found myself unemployed, uh, as along with other people here in Vegas. So immediately I started working for myself, doing media around the city, finding that there was a need within the local craft beer scene and the local venue scene as well. So, yep, yeah, I so, moved out here. So, mo- so taking it back, so those are like the smoke grenades, basically mm-hmm. the colored smoke grenades, that's br- brought you here. That's what brought right? me out here from yeah. Kentucky. Uh, from Louisiana. From Louisiana. Yeah. So I actually. But how did you hear about that job? Like how? I mean, they're like the, I know a little bit about mm-hmm. it. They're like a British company that does like these cool colored smoke grenades. They're totally legal. They're non toxic. And exactly. how did you even get? So I. What used, is the connection to that? The connection was um, I started my own LLC, which is Millicent Media, and I started doing a lot of photography for various companies. Uh, Nola Day being one of them. And eventually they just, they hit me with a full-time position. They're like, hey, we want you to move over here That's and be cool. our in-house uh, media guy. Uh, are you interested? I was like, heck yeah. yeah. I mean, five states away. I've never been on the West Coast. I mean, visited, but never lived. I've always been in Louisiana. So I thought this was a great opportunity, not only for myself, but to also push my career because I went to school for commercial art. So being oh, a did. commercial art major, graduating in 2010. So now it's 10 years being out of college. Definitely had to go for it. So moved out here on the whim, had no family out here, kind of just like packed my, my little car, filled up a four by seven trailer, just me and my cat and just hit the road. Damn, dude. <laughs> that sounds, that's good though. I mean, you got to take that risk, right? Oh yeah. I'm, did you, when you moved out here, did you have any friends? Um, I knew two people. One of the persons was Omar. He actually worked at Nola Day that helped yeah, me get that Omar. job. Yeah. And so they helped me uh, kind of get my feet started by housing me for the first couple months, uh, rent free. And they ended up living with them for a while. Um, so Omar and Ashley were probably my my two friends outside Darren that also worked for Enola Day. Other than that, I had no ties out here other than the people that worked for EG. Damn. So I moved out here and just like immediately just start meeting friends within the community. And honestly, the first the first night I moved here, my friend Ashley was involved around this uh, the cycling group called Smash Bros LV. And they're all fixed gear, uh, Monday night ride community. This is uh, cycling, like mm-hmm. bicycle. bicycles. Yeah, bicycles. So immediately moving here, I went to the first uh, Monday night ride that was of that week and immediately just met friends. Oh, that's and cool. Some of those same people are still friends of mine to the day. What so, year was this? Uh, so this was 2018. Oh, so this is, you're, you moved here 
three years i moved in 2016 so you've only been here for three years three and years you seem like change. you know the whole city because <laughs> i always look at your uh, your instagram you're like here at this pizza spot and then <laughs> that you're always supportive of local businesses which is why i like I wanted to feature you because you you know you know you support people so much. I yeah. feel like, man, dude, Daniel needs his own shout out. Like, obviously, you have more followers than anybody here. Like, that was the whole thing too. It's like I want to learn from you because you are a <laughs> social media guru. Like, you have on your personal account what thirteen thousand followers? Yeah, thirteen point nine, right under fourteen. On your Milson Media, you have thirty five thousand. Yeah, it's and you've built other there. people's social media too. So Definitely like have. you're way ahead of that in terms of even us because we're still trying to grow our business. Um, like as a photographer, and now you also do video, right? Mm -hmm. You do video, and then now what? You DJ. Uh, so I spin on Wednesday nights at Berlin, Berlin downtown. We have what's called Wax Wednesday. Um, it's an open format I used to run in Lake Charles at my friend's bar. And what it is, it encourages people to bring their own vinyls, and oh, I cool. play your songs for you. Oh. So we have a sign-up sheet, uh, kind of like an open mic, uh, open mic night style, and you're allowed to choose what track and what side you want to play, so it makes it easy for me to put it on. And we put the needle on, and we just keep music playing all night. Instead of going to a bar and having – the bar have the music already set. It's awesome to have the interaction with people that have their own personal vinyl because everyone has one vinyl in their collection that they always want to play. And now it's the chance to bring you out and play it for others. That's pretty cool. Like what is, uh, what's Berlin? Is it, uh, is it a bar? Yeah. So it's, um, it's a German beer bar that opened right during uh, COVID. Oh shit. So it's right across from um, Artifice on its art in Charleston. It's this new gray building awesome awesome place amazing atmosphere and it's kind of like the new local spot that's where i've been finding all these amazing artists all these amazing musicians and just kind of like the people that make las vegas for the local scene what it is dude that's cool i like i haven't even been i don't go out much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> this, I live is, out. this is me like i'm just like looking at his stories i always look at your stories i'm like oh that's cool i'm in my pjs right now this is comfy well that, that same thing started from when i was in, in like charles i would basically bike anywhere i could and support local businesses and then moving out here to vegas i soon discovered that there's a way better cycling scene out here really Oh, oh in, cool. in general, I mean, I, I loved riding my entire life, but moving out here, my love for cycling exponentially exploded just from having mountains and terrain, yeah. having actually elevation. But not only that, having a lot of places to stop. Uh, Vegas has a lot of eateries, a lot of local businesses that are always pushing to strive to help each other, which I see that sense of community, I absolutely love it. So when most people think of Vegas, they think just, stri just the strip. When I think Vegas, I think 18B Arts District, 100%. That's where the core of Las Vegas is to me. And that's where I like to like surround myself around. Yeah, you dude, you're in it. I always see you like doing all this cool stuff. You also the the speaking of cycling, you go into this I wanna it's not Vegas, but it is like something that I think that's pretty cool. And we met through my friend Taylor, mm -hmm. who also runs a food truck from she was from LA who ran a food truck, moved to Vegas, started her own thing, and um she's a, also uh, a cyclist. Yeah. And she used to do this thing at, called AIDS Life Cycle, which is like this crazy charity that um, basically brings people together to ride from San Francisco to Los Angeles. It's like 545 miles. Over seven days. Seven days. How the heck was that? How do you even like, yeah, how is that? So I got actually involved in that because of Taylor. I met Taylor on a Monday night Smash Bros ride and she told me. What's she up, was, Taylor? What's up, Taylor? <laughs> she told me that she was doing this uh, charity ride, and I was like, that sounds amazing. And I joined a Star Wars charity group that's part of a chapter in, in uh, California and Nevada, and I really wanted to figure out how could I do something that's charitable but not within the same foundations we worked with, me being a cyclist, me loving riding. I was like, that sounds hard, and that sounds challenging. I want to do it. So I signed up my first year, which was uh, two years ago, uh, solo, did it on a road bike by myself and kind of like just hung around Taylor and just asked her questions to kind of mentor me. Met Team Cretans, which was an all fixed gear team, and I wanted to do it fixed gear, but I've never ridden in California. So before getting myself, you know, too ahead of it, I wanted to see what I was getting, what I was actually the route was before going on a continuous fixed gear single speed bike. So your first gear, you had gears. Yeah. My oh, first your first year. year, you had gears. First year, I had gears. Second year, I did not. I had one. <laughs> Dude, you're nuts. <laughs> and it was actually more enjoyable in the second year. My average speed was better. Uh, just being more prepared for it and trained after doing it the previous year definitely helped. And having a team, Team Cretans out San Diego and California and some in Arizona, 
they definitely made it a lot easier and more enjoyable. That's that's nuts, dude. Like, uh, like to me, I mean, twenty miles is hard <laughs> for me. I'm just like, I don't even understand that. Do you sleep though? Yeah. Like, so we in out. your life in general, <laughs> like, what else do you? Uh, I get about five hours a night. <laughs> all right, that's pretty good. That's like me. I do like six. Um, but that's that's to me that's that's even crazier that you did it on a on a fixed gear one gear like people who don't even who don't cycle I did I cycled for a little bit and like and I had like a Cannondale or yeah. something uh, I rode a fixed gear once I'm like no this is too hard because it's like your legs are the bike basically mm -hmm. you have to break by for resisting forcing the <laughs> locking the, up locking or your legs yeah it's nuts. Um, Dude, that's some hardcore shit, dude. Crazy, Thank you, man. I mean, it, it is definitely enjoyable. I would be doing it. I, I would have been on the ride this year if COVID didn't happen. I would be on the ride next year, but it's still postponed. So maybe 2020? Yeah. Or 2022? We'll see. Um, How many years have you done this? Uh, this would have been, I've only done it two previous years. So I was looking to do it for my third. And within those two years, um, a combination of $13,000 raised individual. Oh, that's so cool. I've done about $6,000 every year for donations. How many people are on this thing? On the ride, about 3,500 cyclists, but Whoa. then there's another 2,000 plus volunteers. So you're looking around 5,000 people. That's cool, dude. So with COVID going on, what's happening uh, to them, been, to the doing, foundation? They've been doing virtual rides and figuring out any way possible to still have money come in because, you know, funds are getting, uh, they're getting shifted elsewhere with COVID and relief in California because it's California's getting hit hard with that. So mm -hmm. um, all the riders are still doing all they can, and we're just trying to continue on as a community, even though it's a virtual side, but just doing our part when yeah. we can. It's hard right now, but. <laughs> yeah, how were you with the, the whole thing? Uh, I know we were affected a little bit. Like I know two, three months business was down. Yeah. Um, we just adapted to like doing testing with the show and like just being careful and yeah. just like being mindful of stuff. But as a freelance photographer, right? Yeah. And videographer, you do have a day job, but like what, how, how's that affected you from not being able to like have events? I know now it's opening up, but yeah. we're just about to go down again. Yeah. <laughs> so we're about to lock like back down. Unfortunate, right? And ho I mean, it may be for the best, but like, yeah, how did it affect you? Like, what were you kind of just hanging out, just yeah, chilling? Yeah, I was still working from home. I was doing, um, the problem is, is like with me being a freelance photographer, I do a lot of um, live entertainment and um, kind of event coverage. Without there being a lot of restaurants, events, and stuff like that, it was kind of a little hit. So I've been doing what I could to make things afloat and meet ends, but uh, still struggling um right now just getting back into the restaurant scene this past saturday beer zombies uh and firefly southwest had an event it was pretty amazing it was a reverse brunch so they had seven different dishes accompanied by uh craft beer for every single dish so i went out there i was hired on to do photos those photos just hit today on beer zombies uh yeah. instagram and i shared as well on mine so Beer and zombies. Then what is the, so? What's your connection there? Are you, do you do all their photos? Basically, um, I don't do all their photos, but I do a lot of stuff for beer zombies in general. I film and photo all their festivals. I do a lot of their merch and all their events. So explain what beer and zombies so, are to the viewer. So beer zombies it start off as a brand. Um, Chris Jacobs out here started as just kind of a social drinking club. Um, it kind of just started as just a brand that made merch eventually started doing a bunch of collabs and now they're actually open. but they're they're beer they're a beer craft beer service right they're or, craft beer service that's now opening a brewery here in oh, vegas okay so they just started off doing small they things. started doing off just merch shirts like glassware um kind of just putting out merchandise out there for the beer scene for the uh -huh. beer community and then it got to the point where you can go to any state and you see someone wearing a beer zombie shirt or hat you knew that guy or that girl was into craft beer oh Serious that's cool about it what is their connection with skinny fats or is there not a connection? There is. Uh, so don't quote me. Um, I'm hopefully I get this information correct, but Chris was, uh, brought on to do, uh, their beer program in Dallas when they, when skinny fats opened one in Dallas, that went really well to where they opened another one after that here in Vegas. And they went in cahoots, uh, kind of like, kind of like friends with benefits. They're both separate businesses, but they operate in tandem by working together. So if you're the beer zombie side, you can also order food at Skinny Fats and vice versa. Oh, because the, the restaurants day, are next to each other? Yeah, well, they, they're connected. Uh huh. Oh, they're like same s sort of owner? No, Not same owner. Imagine like you would go into Skinny Fats and then there'd be another business that's still open in there, but it's 
Oh, beer gotcha. Zombies bottle they're just shot. sharing, sharing. Uh, they're just, I get it. I yeah. get it. That's what Taylor was doing, I think, for Steel City, right? She, and it, they let her use the kitchen or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's, it's something along that way. And right now, they're opening another location in Summerlin, which will be not a bottle shop. It'll be a draft room. Mm-hmm. And they're bringing on a new guy, which his name's Mark. Uh, he's been the new chef that they've been bringing on that's actually kind of revamping all the Skinny Fats menus. So. It's going to be pretty big for Skinny Fats coming up. Uh, it looks like they have a lot of changes going on. And is, that's, that, is that's, Skinny Fats a local? Yes. It's local. just local? It's not just local. Started off here in Vegas, oh, but now did. they have one in Dallas. They have one in Salt Lake City. They had seven stores, but they're down to six right now. Yeah, I have one next door. I have a Skinny Fats next <laughs> that door. That one's yeah. amazing. <laughs> they yeah, have the Blaze of Thunder. Cool. <laughs> and they also have a Dutch Brothers coming up. But um, I like I like the vibe of Skinny Fats skinny fats too Mm -hmm. it's like the gastro pub type of thing right because they got their beers there and they also have like you know their their whole thing is like skinny fat right it's basically like you can have healthy food and just crazy cookies and just like burgers and stuff so if there's one place to eat on the regular it's definitely there if you follow my instagram you see me yeah i always see you posting it i'm just like i can't look at your stuff when i'm hungry dude it's just like i get hungry it's either izzy's pizza skinny fat yeah beer zombies bottle shop (laughs) that pizza place is is that uh, that food truck that you go to yeah that's the the school bus damn Okay. So and it's that, family owned, family owned. All is that a moving owned. food truck though? So it is a, it is a moving food truck, but they do have a location where you can do pickups throughout the week. Cool. Um, so most of the time they're doing just, they're, they're parked at most breweries and um, uh, I guess you'd say um, pop-up shops, you yep. know, kind of yep. like meetups. Mm-hmm. So you can follow the Izzy's Pizza Bus IG and you can see where they're popped up and throughout the week you can pick it up from their actual location. But they're like a Detroit style pizza that... Just absolutely amazing. I mean, once you have it, you go back for more. It's, oh, it's some yeah. of the best pizza in town. Damn, There's also now. more more amazing pizza in town. Don't get me wrong, but if I have to go one place, definitely Izzy's. There you go. I got it. Now we got to get that guy on. <laughs> I yeah. definitely want to get Taylor too because I feel like Taylor has such a unique perspective with Vegas too. Like she's a she's she's a driven person, you know. Like yeah. Taylor's super hardworking, and she started. She's also very business minded. And when she was so young too, when she started the food truck in LA and that was a huge thing. She got really popular. Uh, our friend Taylor runs a steel city sandwich basically. And it was this popular food truck in Los Angeles and we should pop up into Pittsburgh cheesesteaks, Pittsburgh cheesesteaks. Yeah. And she would, um, she would show up to bars in LA and just crush it, you know, like there was always a line and she moved, I found out she moved out here and I've only seen her like three times. Cause yeah. it's like, you and I barely see each other. You know, Vegas is weird. Like it's f- close, but when you live in Henderson and and somebody li- and your friend lives in like North Las Vegas, it's literally it's like, so hard to get to. It's just it's weird. You I know? find myself biking more to Henderson than driving. Like I'll uh, be like cool. I'll, I'll bike down to Lake Las Vegas on the whim like all the time, but I'm like, oh, I gotta drive to Henderson. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. It's weird. I, I only go to North Las Vegas for jobs, but yeah, I like Vegas a lot. Um, what else did we, I forgot. I have my little notes here because this, uh, this is our first podcast. Okay. So, <laughs> so another thing I'd like to talk about, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, so all the all of you that are listening or p- p- paying attention, tuning in, Wednesday night bike rides for all, anyone, not just cyclists. You have rollerblades, skates, lawn board, one wheel, you name it. Come out to the tall bike rides on Wednesdays. That's the new thing that's happening. It's almost like 400 cyclists. It's the, insane. Is that the one where you posted like this guy with a tall bike? Yep. It's with, called like, the Vegas tall, tall Bike. So oh. Los runs this cool. and he actually works for the RTC Bike Share. So he actually does all the repairs for all of our city bikes, which is pretty cool. Cool. And uh, tomorrow we have a ride, which is actually a scavenger hunt. Uh, we have a lot of local businesses that we've reached out to to uh, donate some prizes for that as well. So it's a photo scavenger hunt. Anywhere from 200, 400 people come out every Wednesday. We meet up at Lama Lot. It's uh, right there on 9th and Fremont. We meet up at 6, roll out by 7. Since that hour changed, we started meet up a little early since we've dropped that hour. Local businesses, that's your thing, though. But let me ask you this. This is a weird transition because I just thought about it. It's like, why do you think Vegas is, allows people our age to actually be able to survive? I know a lot of friends in California are really struggling even with like their successful like television jobs and stuff yeah because like rent's high you're in a small space you know um and vegas for me when i went out here i was like oh it's kind of like a relief you can breathe there's like even though you're not making a lot of money you can still pay your rent you know it's like it's sustainable 
lifestyle, I guess, for, for people in like their thirties or forties, Yeah, you know, and I'm, then I always try to tell my friends like, look, it's not what you think. <laughs> it's not just deserts and mm. shots and like and party the strip. <laughs> and the strip. Yeah. It's like, it's like if you like living at a house or an apartment that's affordable with similar California weather, go here, like just check it out, you know? And, yes. and I always think it's, there's always this like hope, like for me, I always think of Vegas as like, oh, this is like cool. There's hope here for me. There <laughs> like is. I can save for a house actually, you know, <laughs> you know? Well, that's what brings you back to where you're saying, like, how did I end up in Vegas? Now, yeah. honestly, <clears throat> would I, did I ever plan to move into Vegas? No. I am so happy a job brought me out here because I absolutely love the city. Yeah. And I don't see myself moving away anytime soon at oh, all. Cool. Like it just, since I've been out here, the, the arts district main street has exponentially exploded to the point there's what? seven breweries now within like a oh, two mile shit. block yeah. really yeah when i first moved here there was just hop nuts there what hop about the art is- scene i know it, when i moved to here i was very because uh, i was like from la i'm like this isn't an art scene and la's art scene is kind of lame too but like i remember looking at the art scene and it was just kind of growing right but like zappos zappos mm-hmm. um established it with you know their big festival life is beautiful which is huge they painted all of downtown with these like popular artists shepherd ferry yeah. like, all these cool art like you'll see the the top artist on murals on these buildings but how is it now locally with like artists artists there's still a lot of street art going on obviously we took a little hit with first fridays being um nulled out but arts factory still killing it mm-hmm. uh, i had a friend david he did a, a showing not too long ago at helio studio mm-hmm which he actually handmade all these Vega signs and gave them out to artists for them to paint their own version of the Vega sign, which was a really cool uh, exhibit called The Sign. I had a lot of friends that turned in work there. And so there's still studios happening, I would say, almost bi-weekly. So yeah. it seems the artists, they're making it happen. They're not giving up. They're, they're fighting. They're yeah. fighting for their art. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough business to be in. I, I was doing it for a while. I couldn't do it. And... I even heard I I heard that that area fifteen yeah. yeah that's like a whole art thing too right it's, it's like it's a big a whole rare. art installment pretty much oh it's an installment uh it's it's basically like a giant art installment from the same guy that does like the, the life is beautiful Dude. it's his artwork that's in there oh. yeah and and more stuff have you been in there I I've only been there for a small little time but I wasn't able to like fully fully like grasp the the concept of it so. Wow. I definitely have to go check it out. It's just been so busy with everything happening around with the uh, Halloween season. So yep. now that it's cooling back down, I'll try to go before we lock back down. No, we're gonna. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Please, uh, please, please. Well, dude, thank you. We're wrapping up, but uh, is there anything else you did? We talk about your airsoft sort of community. Uh, well, the airsoft community. That's, is there one here? There is actually. Um, t- the the two guys that brought me out here, they're actually open a field in Pahrump. So it looks oh, like cool. I'll be traveling back to Pahrump on the regular. Cool. But they're in the process of opening one. They used to have a field out here that closed years ago that was connected to the, the Boulder City Gun Club. So right now, once we get that field up and running, um, there's a lot of players out here. There's just no spot for us to play that's a paintball field. So look uh-huh. for a new spot soon. Other than that, uh, next year, we're looking to travel for airsoft games, and that's about it. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. So I know you got an event right after. What's that about? You got you got work? So or? I actually have a friend, uh, another friend, once again, shameless plug, Salsa Palazzo, dude, Best dude. Salsa in Vegas. Um, he's down at Chops downtown. Um, it's kind of like a block party style where there's a bunch of street vendors. Uh, to make this, uh, uh, tamales would be there as well. But my friend Bullet runs a company here in Vegas that, honestly, his salsa is the best salsa I've ever had in my life. So um, I'm going to be headed down there to kind of sell some salsa with him and just kick it, just hang out. Do you always bring a camera? Um, Usually I do, but tonight I'm just trying to hang out and just just support my friends. So I'll be there. Just basically anyone that walks past his booth will be sampling his salsa if I'm there. Well, I'm going to (laughs) be watching your stories. Yep. (laughs) Uh, I got to talk to you about social media too off this, but yeah. uh, I'm going to wrap it up, dude. Here's my in- outro me- uh, music. Do I have outro music now? There it is. Daniel Castro, episode one. Thank you, dude. Thanks for having me. Man. All right, this buddy. Was fun.